Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar where we will be discussing tachycardia. Specifically, we'll be talking about several different types of tachycardia, including regular narrow complex tachycardia, irregular narrow complex tachycardia, regular wide complex tachycardia, and irregular wide complex tachycardia. Tachycardia is a heart rate of greater than 100 beats per minute. When the heart beats too quickly, there's a short and relaxation phase. This causes two main problems. The ventricles are unable to fill completely, causing cardiac output to decrease, and the coronary arteries receive less blood, causing supply to the heart to decrease. Tachycardia can be classified as stable or unstable. A heart rate greater than or equal to 150 beats per minute usually causes symptoms. Unstable tachycardia always requires prompt attention. Stable tachycardia can become unstable. So some symptoms of tachycardia um, include hypotension, sweating, pulmonary edema, edema, edema or congestion, jugular venous distension, chest pain or discomfort, shortness of breath, weakness or dizziness, lightheadedness, and altered mental state. So symptomatic tachycardia with a heart rate greater than 100 beats per minute, this is what you would do. So first, if the individual is unstable, provide immediate synchronized cardioversion. If the individual's tachycardia producing hemodynamic instability and serious symptoms, are the symptoms, i.e. pain and distress of an acute myocardial infarction producing the tachycardia, assess the individual's hemodynamic status by establishing IV giving supplementary oxygen, and monitoring the heart. Heart rate of 100 to 130 BPM is usually a result of underlying process and often represents sinus tachycardia. In sinus tachycardia, the goal is to identify and treat the underlying systemic cause. Heart rate greater than 150 BPM may be symptomatic. The higher the rate, the more likely the symptoms are due to tachycardia. You should then assess the QRS complex. If at any point you become uncertain or uncomfortable during the treatment of a stable patient, seek expert consultation. The treatment of stable patients can be potentially harmful. Adenosine may cause bronchospasm, therefore adenosine should be given with caution to patients with asthma. For regular narrow complex tachycardia, or probable SVT, attempt vagal maneuvers. Obtain a 12-lead ECG. Consider expert consultation. And then for drugs, adenosine, 6 mg rapid IVP. If no conversion, give 12 mg IVP as the second dose. And you may only attempt that 12 mg once. For irregular narrow complex tachycardia, or probable AFib, obtain 12 lead ECG and consider expert consultation. Control the rate with dilithium. 15 to 20 milligrams or 0.5 milligrams per kg IV over two minutes or beta blockers. For irregular wide complex tachycardia or probable VT, obtain a 12 lead ECG and consider expert consultation. Convert rhythm using amiodarone 150 mg IV over 10 minutes and perform elective cardioversion. For irregular wide complex tachycardia, obtain a 12 lead ECG and consider expert consultation. Consider an antiarrhythmic. If it's for sad state points, give magnesium sulfate 1 to 2 GM IV and may follow with 0.5 to 1 GM over 60 minutes. Don't forget, we offer online ACLS certification on our site. You can find a link to it in the description. We encourage you to become certified as soon as possible, whether that be on your own time with an online course or in an in-classroom setting. So thank you so much for tuning into today's webinar. We will catch you the next time.